Hello, my name is Ian McCall, and this is a video from the Student Skin Consult undergraduate course uh, on diagnosing skin disease. It's presented by the Australian Institute of Dermatology. So let's have a little look at uh, the diagnosis of skin disease. I want to put a, a very simple proposition to you that you can diagnose skin disease by asking three questions and uh, knowing four mnemonics. So what are the three questions you're going to ask yourself? First of all, is the rash red and scaly or red and non-scaly? Secondly, is the rash pustular or blistering? And thirdly, is the rash a funny color, funny shape, or in a funny distribution? So those are the three questions. Red scaly or red non-scaly? Pustular or uh, vesicular blistering? And is it a funny sh color, shape, or distribution? <coughs> Now the commonest rashes you're going to see are going to be the red scaly rashes. Um, so what are the four mnemonics that you're going to uh, have to learn? Well, the first mnemonic is the PM's pet. I always think of our Prime Minister Kevin Rudd sitting with a little Siamese cat called Petal on his lap. Um, so the pet, P-E-T, is psoriasis eczema tinea, And the initial P of PM's pet is pityriasis rosea. Pityriasis versicolor. There are a variety of other pityriasis, but these are the two that you want to remember. The M is for mycosis fungoides, which is a T-cell lymphoma, and the little S is for solar damage, because in Australia we can get a lot of solar damage that looks like a skin rash. So the red scaly diseases, the PM's pet. Um, what about the red non-scaly diseases? Well, there the mnemonic is, see you at the Department of Veterans Affairs, Evie, where Evie's your girlfriend. And the C stands for cellulitis, the U for urticaria, DDA, that's a drug eruption, a viral or bacterial exanthem, and an annular erythema. And the EVIE, the first D is erythema multiforme, the V is vasculitis, the second D is erythema nodosum, and the I is an infiltrate, infiltrate of cells or substances. A lot of the rarer conditions that are red and non-scaly are in fact infiltrates. And it can be quite difficult to diagnose these. Often you have to actually do a biopsy to diagnose them. But the others you can recognize. Now what about pustules? What's the mnemonic there? The mnemonic's II, infective or inflammatory. Now the infective things, remember, aren't just bacterial. It's viral, bacterial, or fungal, sometimes even rickettsia. Um, and the inflammatory, well, it's either uh, inflammation due to a drug reaction with pustules or else it's pustular psoriasis. Remember, I've had psoriasis already as a red scaly disease, but really acute psoriasis can be a pustular disease with a marked infiltrate of neutrophils into the epidermis. If you get a lot of them, they'll locate under the stratum corneum and present as small pustules. So what about uh, vesicles and blisters? which is the fourth mnemonic. Well, that's ICI. Again, the initial I is for infection, either bacterial, uh, viral, or fungal. Uh, the C is for contact dermatitis. A lot of contact dermatitis can give vesicles or blisters. And the second I is both inflammatory and immunological, because a lot of the blistering disorders are immune-based. There's immune complexes, either uh, antibodies or um, cells that will atta attack the antigens in the basement membrane. And the big test we do for um, immuno immunological blistering diseases is immunofluorescence, where we do a little biopsy here of an intact blister and uh, look for the deposition of immunoglobulins and complement of the basement membrane. And the classic feature that you'll see in uh, a condition called bullous pemphigoid is IgG and C3 at the basement membrane. So there's your four uh, mnemonics. The PM's pet, see you at the Department of Veterans Affairs, EV, II, and ICI. And there, there was that third question, whether the rash is a funny shape, color, or distribution. And I've said that's going to be dealt with later because really that's the rest of dermatology. So remember the four mnemonics.
and you can at least tackle any red scaly disease, any red non-scaly disease, pustular disorder, vesicular and blistering disorder, and give a simple uh, series of potential diagnoses. Now we run a diploma where we in fact extend these mnemonics further, but uh, for at a student level, these are the conditions you need to know a little bit about. What about this one here? Look at this rash. It's obviously a blistering eruption. Um, so it's ICI. Is it infective? Well, most infective blisters will have pustules. It will have pus in there, and you'll get a pus level. This is just clear fluid. Is it uh, contact dermatitis? Again, it could be. But if I was to tell you this rash is symmetrical on the on the limbs here, and the groin, and also up in the axillae, then that would be unlikely. Um, is it inflammatory? Could be a drug reaction uh, that could do this. Um, is it immunological? Well, certainly that's the likeliest cause in an elderly patient with intact blisters occurring on a red base. The intact blisters mean that the separation of the epidermis from the dermis is occurring deep down. Uh, it's occurring at the level of the dermo-epidermal junction. And you've got a, a thick wall of intact epidermis that's giving you the intact blister. If the blister was very high up under the stratum corneum, you'd have only a very thin wall of uh, tissue over it, and the blister would tend to burst, giving a crust. This is Willis pemphigoid, one of the commonest uh, immune blistering disorders in the elderly. Usually intact blisters are occurring on a red base. So, here were the little questions. What's the likely diagnosis and what mnemonic would you have used? Well, the diagnosis is uh, bullous pemphigoid and the mnemonic is ICI. Let's just flick on to the next one. <coughs> this rash erupted after a bad strep throat. Now, at this level, it's difficult to, to know whether the scale's there, but let me tell you, it is red and scaling. Um, and if you, as I say there, if you had scraped this with the edge of your nail, you would see that the lesions are scaly. So what's the mnemonic? Well, it's a red scaly disorder, so it's the PM's PET. So PET, psoriasis, eczema, tinea. Could it be psoriasis? Um, it could be, but it's a peculiar type. I've said it occurs after a bad strep throat, and there's a condition called guttate psoriasis that will occur in those circumstances, raindrop psoriasis. Could it be an eczema? Usually an eczema is going to have weeping. It's going to have little erosions uh, that are there, and there's no signs of that. Could it be a tinea infection? Well, it's a very gross tinea infection if it is. Um, much fewer lesions might be. Pteriasis rosea? It's not following the, the lines of the, the ribs here. It's not really oval-shaped. Um, there's a lot in the limbs here extending down past the elbow, which would be unusual in pteriasis rosea. And pit vesicolor? Again, much too florid for that. It's a much more subtle uh, scale that you get in pteriasis versicolor. Uh, much more brani-like. Mycosis fungoides? No, it came on far too quickly. And solar damage? Well, again, covered areas inside of the armpits. It's not that. So, the questions. What category does it come under? PM's pet? What differentials would you give? Well, we've talked about some there. What do you think the diagnosis is? Let's look and see what we've put. As I said, red scaly, PM's PET, um, onset too quick for mycosis fungoides. We talked about pit rosea and the herald patch. Talked about eczema and the little erosions, tinea. Again, the only one that will come on quickly with tinea is got a new pet cat, uh, where the, uh, the, you can get a very quick reaction and a very florid reaction to an animal fungus, but not as marked as that. But any red scaly disease, it's often a good idea to take some skin scrapings and uh, ask them to do a KOH for fungus a fungal hyphae and culture. But this is the gutty type of uh, psoriasis, typically occurring after a streptococcal uh, throat infection. What else have we got to look at? Let's take this one on the leg. It's red, it's non-scaly, it's got some slight bruising associated with these lesions. They're painful. So I've said there, came on suddenly with tender lumps in the shins, then slowly resolved. So, red non-scaly, see you at the Department of Veterans Affairs, EV. Cellulitis? No, there's too many of them on both sides. Cellulitis would be a big plaque. Urticaria? No, the lesions are, are tender, painful, lasting longer than 24 hours. Drug reaction? Possible, but most drug reactions are going to be much more extensive. Viral exanthem? No, it's much too big for that, and the bruising's a bit against that, too. Um, annular erythema? 
It's uh, first of all, it's not really annular. There's no cleaving in the center. Okay, erith evi, erythema multiforme. Usually, you have target lesions with that. In other words, you have a red central area, clear area, and then another ring around that. These aren't like that. Vasculitis. The surface skin here actually blanches, except for the bruising area, but the rest of it does blanch easily. Um, infiltrate. Well, it's possible that there could be an infiltrate here. Infiltrates in the lower leg like that. Ooh, the only condition I can think of off the top of my head would be uh, pretibial myxedema in that site, but it's usually a big plaque that has a peau d'orange appearance. So that's unlikely. These are tender and diffuse. So the other E, erythema nodosum, and that's in fact what uh, what this is. So let's have a little look. Yeah, we've just said it's C, the Department of Veterans Affairs, EV. We said the diagnosis. Because there's some bruising, it suggests there's a vascular involvement. There's some oozing from blood vessels. And erythema nodosum is a form of uh, paniculitis occurring in the deeper layers of the uh, fat in the septi. Um, and that's why it's tender and why it feels um, thickened as well. You need a deep incisional biopsy if you're going to see this because the damage is all done in the fat layer. So I've said there, the bruising is an interesting finding. Vascular involvement, redness and tenderness suggest cellulitis, but there's multiple diffuse tender nodules rather than the tender plaque. The lesions last longer than 24 hours, therefore not after carrier. Drug reaction, a possibility, but very localized. Viral and uh, unlikely, as is an annual erythema. No target lesions of erythema multiforme. And this is a form of vasculitis involving fat tissue called erythema nodosum. What about this one? This rash arose suddenly on the skin, and the shape would change from hour to hour. Now, again, it's red and it's non-scaly. So, see you at the Department of Veterans Affairs, Evie. Cellulitis? Cellulitis would be a single plaque that would gradually expand out rather than a series like that. It would be tender, maybe a fever. Urticaria. Hmm. Uh, it could be urticaria. The lesions often uh, only last four to six hours, certainly less than 24. Change shape, new, area, new lesions come up in other areas. Drug reaction. Well, some urticarias can be a drug reaction, so you'd have to consider that. Viral erythema is unlikely, although they may be a cause of urticaria. Annular erythema, again, the individual lesions uh, last only four to six hours, whereas those of an annular erythema will slowly expand over several days and join up. Um, it's not erythema multiforme, it's not a vasculitis, it's not erythema uh, in the dosum in the lower legs, and it's not an infiltrate because of its varying, uh, you know, infiltrates tend to be fixed. These are varying in size and shape. So this is urticaria. So if we have a quick look. There you'll see the things that we, we spoke about. Um, I might leave it at that because to get it on YouTube, I've got to keep this under 15 minutes. But just remember those four uh, mnemonics, the red scaly for PM's uh, pet, red non-scaly for CU Department of Veterans Affairs, EV, uh, pustules, II, and contact dermatitis, uh, uh, blistering eruptions, ICI. We'll do some more of that later. Thank you very much.